Coming up next, we look at the word itself as an art form. The last impression you had of letterpress printing might have been in history class, but artists today are using this nearly forgotten technique to reinvent their work. In Colorado Springs, an exhibition featuring local, national, even international letterpress artists showcase just how versatile this medium can be. Kate takes us to the UCCS Gallery of Contemporary Art. Letterpress printing is the slow, tactile way to engage in, in printing and, and language that's an antidote to our digital world. The type, the ink, as a smell, you have to stand up, you have to roll, you, you use all your senses to print and it's quite amazing. I was just hooked immediately. But that moment when you pull the paper off, it, you know, it's just like this gift, or like opening a gift or this act of discovery. It's an exhilarating experience when you pull that print. Every print is a bit different. There's a texture and it's not perfect. Most of the people I know have some sort of letterpress origin story. And for me, it was discovering presses and type that were kind of abandoned in the printmaking shop in my undergraduate program. And just being fascinated by how these machines worked and the production process and, and just the materials themselves being beautiful. And there's something that's meditative about setting type. You become really focused in this way that kind of drowns out the world around you. I like printing, I just love it. I just turn off every device and I, it's my zen moment, like I just print. Letterpress dates back to, I think, that fact that we're all taught in elementary school about the invention of the Gutenberg printing press in 1440. And then that was the um, establishment of using movable type in order of production of books, um, you know, paper ephemera, broadsides, handbills. And then there was the industrial age, plate on plate, and then to go a bit faster, like a cylinder on plate, and then it was cylinder on cylinder to go faster and faster for newsprint, for example. So we lost a lot of quality. And that production process actually continued pretty late into the 20th century. And that's when many institutions sold off quite a bit of their letterpress you know, materials because of the movement to digital production. And there was a resurgence of letterpress as more of an artisanal form or an experimental form, um, headed into the 1980s and 90s because of the surplus of cheap, accessible materials. The advent of movable type, the democratizing of communication, that's you know, all embedded in this show. I was looking at this exhibition and thinking about people who were either doing something interesting with the method of printing itself or with some of the historic visual language and forms. I think it gives a very good variety of what's going on at the moment in letterpress. So we have Amos Kennedy printing these super cheeky, amazing broadsides and just playing with that historic broadside poster form that we're all really familiar with. And then Anne Lubin works in the same vein where she's blowing up the broadside into these huge quilted constructions that kind of create these larger than life narratives. And then David Wolski is more on the technical side with the printing process where he's created this process he calls isotype printing that allows him to print only one isolated area of the piece of type. And then Judith Poyer with her printing on film. I don't know anyone else who's doing that. Judith began printing directly on 16 millimeter film as an experiment. When she ran it through a projector, to her surprise, the machine played the ink on the soundtrack area of the film. The soundtrack area on the film is more or less here, so whatever is printed on this area will be read by the, by the telecine or the projector. It's, it, will read the, the, it will read the variations of light and it will give the sound like this will go ta -na 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 -na. It's quite funny, it's almost Beethoven. I like to work with uh, ab abstraction as well and the, the beauty of the letters and the rhythm. I began as a textile artist, also working in printmaking media. All of my pieces begin as plain white cotton cloth. And then on top of that, I build using predominantly natural dyes sourced from plants. And then on top of that, I layer it with marbling techniques and monoprint, letterpress printing, screen printing, and then also cyanotype, which is um, like a photosensitive print process using the sun. 
And then we have our two local presses that are represented, Ladyfinger's Letter Press with their series of protest posters representing freedom of the press and the power to have the press as a representation of your own voice. And then the project from Colorado College that's part of this national project called For Freedoms about protecting sacred Native American spaces. I think people feel connected to the symbolic history of what a press has meant. There's the power to distribute information, it's the power to have your voice heard. I think it's 21st century and it's fun to do things that talk to you now, but with this old process, like to reinvent the, the tradition in a way. It's not presses sitting in a museum all lined up or type sitting unused in a case. It's people who are showing their love and appreciation for this craft by learning about it and carrying it forward into the future. So I've got some friends who are great letterpress artists oh, and I fun. love going to their studio yeah. and kind of seeing their process. Absolutely. Yeah, just like what Judith said, it's the smell of the ink and the whirring of the machines. It's this totally visceral experience. Yeah, and I love seeing how artists have changed their own narrative of their work yeah. and made it their benefit. It's very inspiring.